Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos involving genetics. In this video, linked genes and chromosome mapping will be described. There are many traits that are located on each chromosome, as shown in the picture on the top of this slide. Genes that are located on the same chromosome are referred to as linked genes. The rate of crossing over from linked genes can be used to determine the distance that these genes are located apart from one another. These topics will be described throughout this video. If you're trying to determine the possibility of two traits being inherited in offspring, it's usually as simple as a couple of coin flips. This is because the odds are these two genes are located on different chromosomes, chromosomes 1 and 2 in this example. Independent assortments suggest that these two traits, A and B, would be passed upon independently. If you were to look at the gametes that could be produced from the previous chromosomes, you would expect to find an equal likelihood of any of the different combinations of dominant and recessive alleles from these two different chromosomes. The different possibilities are illustrated here. If the two traits are linked, that is, they are located on the same chromosome, chromosome 1 in this example, these rules don't hold true. The dominant and recessive alleles from this example are much more likely to be passed on together because they're on the same chromosome. This is shown in the image of the potential gametes on this slide. This is why some traits, such as red hair and freckles, for example, are commonly passed on together. While these traits are linked, that is, they're located on the same chromosome, something can occur that would cause a dominant allele and a recessive allele to be passed on together. This is called crossing over. Bits of information from homologous chromosomes can be swapped out with one another during prophase 1 of meiosis. When crossing over occurs, you can end up with these results. A small percentage of the gametes would contain a dominant form of gene A and a recessive form of gene B, or vice versa. If two genes are separated by independent assortment, you would expect the same chance of genes separating in any manner. With crossing over, the frequency of traits being passed on together is always 50% or higher. The closer two genes are together, the less likely that crossing over is to occur randomly between them, and the more common that they're going to be passed on together. In the example on this slide, genes B and VG are about twice as far apart as B and CN, or CN and VG. As a result, crossing over is about twice as likely to occur between the two furthest genes. You may notice that 9 and 9.5%, the rate of crossing over between each of the genes that are closest to each other, don't add up to the rate of crossing over between the furthest genes. The reason for this? Crossing over can and does occur many times within each chromosome. In the previous example, crossing over is more likely to occur twice between genes that are quite far apart. Chromosome mapping is a technique that uses the frequency of crossing over with linked genes to figure out the relative locations of genes within the same chromosome. Each 1% chance of crossing over is referred to as 1MU, or mapping unit. These are sometimes called centimorgans. What I'll do now is go through an example showing how to determine if genes are linked as well as how to map different linked genes based upon observable data. In this problem, there's a cross involving three linked traits in fruit flies, SC, EC, and VG. A fruit fly with all of these traits, described in the scenario as recessive, were crossed with a homozygous dominant or wild-type fruit flies, represented by the symbol plus for each of these traits. After these fruit flies mated, all the resulting fruit flies would show the dominant or wild-type trait. They would, however, be carriers for each of the recessive traits, as this slide suggests. If you were to take heterozygous flies from the previous crossing and mate them with homozygous recessive flies, the same recessive flies from the first generation, you might end up with the results illustrated on the table on this slide. If these traits were not linked, that is, they were located on different chromosomes, you would expect independent assortment to occur. You could find a 1 to 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 1 ratio of every possible outcome that's shown on this table. You would just have to set up Punnett squares to see this for yourself. These results are not even close to that ratio. Anytime the results of a cross are considerably different from what you'd expect them to be, you could perform a chi-squared test to statistically evaluate this, then the traits are probably linked. The term linked, again, means that two traits, or three traits, are passed on disproportionately too often. This can be seen in the frequency of fruit flies that show all recessive traits and all dominant traits. 
the top two rows in the chart on this slide, both that are referred to as parental combinations of alleles. The remaining six rows are called recombinants because crossing over occurs and recombines the chromosomes in a different way. You can calculate the rate of recombination by finding how often two traits are not passed on together and dividing this by the total number of offspring in that particular generation. The rate of recombination is, in essence, how frequently crossing over occurs between two particular genes. As we discussed earlier, the greater the distance between two genes, the greater the chance that crossing over would occur between them. Using the recombination frequencies of numerous genes, you can map out their relative locations of one another. It's easiest to start with genes that have the highest rate of recombination and place them on opposite sides of your chromosome. From that point, adding new genes, guessing where they go, and checking to see if your results add up works pretty well. While this is pretty straightforward with three genes, keep in mind, human chromosomes contain thousands of genes. Why are the bottom two rows of this chart so low, might you ask? Crossing over can, and does as described earlier, occur many times on a single chromosome. In this case, crossing over could occur before and after the EC gene. It is not too likely, but it can happen. This is why thousands of trials can be important. That is the end of this video outlining linked traits and chromosome mapping. If you would like to learn any more about genetics or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.